this series is more counsel. Why is it important, you ask? Because this series was a man who deferred to wise counsel and at times let his small counsel be autonomous in his workings. Although he was always present, until well late into his reign, he was not your typical absolute monarch who liked power tripping and micromanaging. First off, Sir Otto Hightower, Hand of the King. Otto Hightower first became Hand in the last couple of years of King Jay's reign. After Prince Balon's death, who was Hand to his father, King Jay decided to outsource the position. He called on Sir Otto Hightower, the younger brother of the Lord of Old Town, one of the wealthiest houses of Western. Sir Otto brought his whole family to the court with him, including a certain Alison Hightower, whom we all know well by now. As the records show, King Jay, whose health had deteriorated due to age, became worse and worse after the death of both his heirs, Iman and Balon, and his wife, Good Queen Alison. This gave Otto Hightower the opportunity to quickly gain control of the council and the running of the realm. This power grab did not go unnoticed though, and gradually Otto Hightower became the subject of whispers and loathing among courtiers and common folk alike. His biggest hater, unsurprisingly, was Daemon, brother to the king and in his own head the heir apparent, that is, before Viserys made Rhaenyra his heir. Considering both men were highly ambitious, it is no wonder that they could not bear the sight of each other. When the courtiers whispered behind Sir Otto Hightower that he routinely overreached himself, they were not entirely wrong. When Viserys made Daemon master of coin, he only lost the year, partly due to his own disinterest in matters that did not involve fighting, and a big part because of Hightower's objections and complaints about Daemon's performance. When Viserys removed Daemon from the position and installed him as master of laws, he only made it half a year before he was removed from that position too. Again, in part thanks to Daemon's disregard for bureaucracy and, of course, Hightower's constant whinging. Hightower might have been successful in removing his arch nemesis from the small council, but inadvertently gave Daemon a position that suited him too well. Commander of the City Watch. This part I already covered in my first episode review, which I recommend watching if you haven't. Otto Hightower was an intelligent man, and as we established, ambitious. Although he managed to insert his bloodline into the succession, his explicit overreaches would one day come back to bite him. Lord Corlys Valerian. Next up, we have the Master of Ships, or as it was called in those times, the Lord of the Tides. I've already gone into great detail about the Sea Snake in a previous video. If you're curious to know his full history and learn about his fascinating life, check out my video dedicated to him. A quick reminder that in the book Corlys is not master of ships since he resigned in protest against King Jay's decision to bypass Prince Rhaenys in favor of his son Prince Balon as new heir to the throne. Grand Maester Melus. As far as the book version goes, Melus did not become Grand Maester until three years after the present year which is 110 AC in the show. That's a small detail though, showrunners decided to start with him as Grand Maester instead of having to bring him in mid-season. It is worth mentioning that the position of Grand Maester is decided by the Citadel in Old Town, which is the headquarters of Maesters and where they all study the art. So if at any time anyone other than the Citadel appoints a new Grand Maester or removes one, they have broken with tradition and laws. Grand Maester Melis was a level-headed man who always advised caution and pragmatism. He famously responded to a certain question of someone's preference of company impeding a potential marriage with a memorable quote. What of it? I do not like the taste of fish, but when fish is served, I eat it. We can positively assume that the Grand Maester was familiar with a certain HBO's critically acclaimed series as well. He is also a central figure in reforging a broken relationship later on. Despite being good at counsel and healing ties, Menes was not as gifted in the art of physical healing, which was supposed to be his main job. He had a fondness for leeching his patients and believed it to be the best course of action for most complications. Outside of that, his medical skills left something to be desired. Lord Lyman Beesbury, Master of Coin Not much is known of Lord Lyman Beesbury, but what we can be sure of is that he was a man of honor and integrity. He served as Master of Coin under the old King Jay and then for the entirety of King Viserys. Lord Lionel Strong, Master of Laws Lord Strong is one of the more intriguing characters. He was a big guy and a notorious warrior. He spoke in a slow manner and often remained silent and chose to listen. 
This made most people assume he was stupid, because that's what the majority would think of big hawking brutes. Yet what they didn't know was that Lord Lionel was actually a highly educated man. He had attended the Citadel and gone as far as forging six licks of his maester's chain before giving up and deciding he did not want to be a maester. Now you might be wondering why is the minimum number of links in a chain a student needs to earn his maester's status? The exact number is unknown, however we know that you need at least more than nine. Now back to Lord Strong. It was his in-depth knowledge of the laws of the realm, his no-nonsense demeanor, and probably reputation for being a fighter that made Viserys choose him to serve as the master of laws. Especially considering how Hightower had criticized the previous master of laws and run him out of office. Just like Sir Arthur Hightower, Lord Lionel Strong brought his family with him to court. Among them two daughters who became Rhaenyra's handmaids and two sons. The two sons will be highly influential in what is to come. Sir Harwin Breakbone Strong, the older brother, like his father, was famous for his combat skills and became a captain in the Gold Cloaks. The younger brother, called Laris Clubfoot Strong, was naturally not so physically gifted, but had a cunning mind and joined the king's confessors. Now that is the current situation of the king's small council. All these men are capable and as time will prove, will help keep peace and facilitate prosperity of the realm for nearly three decades. However, one man's unquenchable appetite for power and influence will be partly responsible for one of the bloodiest eras of Westeros. Thank you again for watching another one of my videos. If you like what I'm doing, please make sure to leave a comment and tickle that like button. If you feel extra generous, then may have to even subscribe to my channel. I hope to be able to keep producing good material in the form of these videos. See you in the next.